Welcome to the AMS Family Faith Assessment. My name is Jose Amaya. Uh, I'm going to provide you with an overview of the AMS Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization Archdiocesan Religion Curriculum Guide, followed by um, an orientation to the AMS Family Faith Assessment and AMS Family Faith Passport. And we're going to do that by way of uh, visiting the AMS um, website to see where information is located um, in regards to the AMS Family Faith Assessment and also the actual AMS Family Faith Assessment website. So let's get started. Um, in on, on uh, January 25th of 2013, Archbishop Timothy Broglio promulgated Forming Disciples for the, for the New Evangelization as the Archdiocesan Religion Curriculum Guide. This uh, curriculum guide became effective on the same uh, year on the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, August 6th. Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization provides a systematic and consistent vision for um, catechesis in this global archdiocese. As we look at uh, forming disciples for the evangelization, it is important to uh, understand that the context for all catechesis is evangelization. Catechesis is the educational component of this um, uh, enterprise that we call evangelization to proclaim Jesus Christ to adults, youth, and children. Perhaps uh, if you recall your experience growing up and uh, learning the faith, uh, you might recall that a lot of emphasis was placed in knowing the faith, in um, memorizing uh, the principles and the precepts of our faith. And perhaps very little was done to make a, a good connection between faith and life. Forming Disciples for the Day Evangelization not only provides uh, knowledge of the faith, um, we're encouraged not only to teach the faith and have the participants learn the faith, but also to help participants understand what they are learning so that they can go and live out their faith in the day-to-day -day life. In other words, uh, incorporating this dynamic of head, heart, and hands. That it is important to know the faith, but it is also important to not only know the faith, but to fall in love with Jesus and to understand the person of Jesus and his message so that we can go and do, live out our faith um, in our daily life, in the family, in school, in the marketplace, wherever we happen to be. Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization is found on the four pillars of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, those being the creed, the faith that we believe, sacraments, the faith that we celebrate, Christian living, uh, uh, how we live our faith in community and in service to the world, and prayer, um, how we pray our, our faith. So you begin to see here that there is a movement happening, um, knowing the faith, understanding our faith, so that we can live our faith. Forming Disciples for, for the New Evangelization is furthermore um, found on the six key elements of a Catholic life. Uh, the six key elements, none other than the six uh, tasks of catechesis, and those are knowledge of the faith, liturgy and sacrament, morality, prayer, education for living in the Christian community, evangelization, and apostolic life. You can find additional information about the six key elements of Catholic life uh, by going to the National Directory for Catechesis number 20. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, Jesus gives 
us a command. Jesus um, commands us to go and teach, to teach others the faith that we have received. Forming disciples for the new evangelization is standards and indicators. The standards and indicators in forming disciples for the new evangelization clearly state what participants must know, understand, and do. Forming disciples for the new evangelization provides a common language and agreed upon standard for sharing the faith with adults, youth, and children. Imagine for a moment that families are PCSing, families are moving from installation to installation as they are, um, as they live their active life in the military uh, services. So forming disciples for the new evangelization attempts to provide a systematic approach to catechesis so that as families move around from installation to installation, the expectations for the, for the teaching of the faith will be the same. So, for example, families who are at King's Bay at this moment, they will be PCSing, they will be moving uh, to another installation. So when they move and they get to the new installation, the expectations for learning the faith, for teaching the faith, will be the same because the curriculum is standard-based. Um, and likewise, the families that you uh, welcome at King's Bay, for example, they will be coming from other installations um, where the teaching of the faith is standard-based. And therefore, as they move into your community, they will find the same expectations, the same language, the same um, standards for sharing the faith. The indicators in forming disciples for the, for the new evangelization help catechists, parents, catechetical leaders focus uh, instruction and guide the use of any text or resources. For example, um, the textbooks that you're using, um, now you will be able to use them not only uh, for teaching the faith, but also in light of forming disciples for the new evangelization as a resource to look for additional information at different chapters to support the teaching of a specific theme or topic. The indicators also allow us to have a true alignment of language, instruction, and assessment. As you will see, uh, Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization now has the AMS Family Faith Assessment that goes along with this curriculum guide. This chart here um, summarizes the, uh, the curriculum guide as a whole. How should you understand this uh, chart that you're seeing right here? We um, established already that forming disciples for the new evangelization is found on the four pillars of the catechism. So on the first column here, you have listed the four uh, pillars of the catechism of the Catholic Church, followed by the six key elements of Catholic life. So from the four pillars of the catechism and the six key elements of Catholic life emanate each of the 14 standards. Um, which are located here on the third column. The 14 standards are creed, sacred scripture, uh, sacrament, liturgy, conscience, Christian living, prayer. Number eight is Catholic church, followed by ecumenism, Catholic principles and relationships, vocation, Catholic social teaching, interreligious dialogue, and missionary vocation. So as you look at this um, chart, you begin to realize that we're taking a very comprehensive approach to the teaching of the Catholic faith and our Catholic faith communities. So um, it is also important to understand that each of the 14 standards apply equally from womb to tomb. 
So in this case, uh, we're dealing with grades pre-K through eight. So all of the 14 standards will be applicable equally throughout pre-K through eighth grade. Each of the 14 standards is a broad statement that is very compressed, very compact, uh, the essence, if you will, um, but that needs to be unpacked. So uh, the indicators will do the unpacking for us. The standards are, if you will, the, uh, the goal, and the indicators are the objectives that lead us to accomplish uh, the teaching of the faith through the standards. Now, forming disciples for the new evangelization, again, is standard-based. It is spiral in scope and sequence and tied to its own assessment. What do we mean by spiral in scope and sequence? It means that every year, um, all the adults, youth, and children will be uh, studying the same theme, and, but in, uh, in an age-appropriate level. Um, what we have here now is uh, a chart um, that shows how the, the, the curriculum guide looks like when you're um, accessing your grade segment, your grade, uh, your catechist grade segment. So for example here, uh, we have a numerical code on the first column. And in this case, it reads 1.07.01. The first one refers to the grade level. In this case, is grade one. 0.07 means standard seven, which is prayer. And in this case, prayer, uh, the standard reads, know and participate in the Catholic tradition of prayer and acknowledge prayer as the primary way we deepen our knowledge of God in the community. Um, and the third number here, 0.01, refers to the first indicator. So what you see here is that the first number uh, stays the same. The second number stays the same for this standard. What changes here is the indicator, the number of the indicator. So the indicators are unpacking uh, this broad statement uh, of the standard. All right? Now, we also see in indicator 1.07.06, there is a key term here that is highlighted in blue and underlined. These terms are defined in Appendix 3, which is the alphabetical glossary or the catechetical glossary. Um, and all of these indicators um, and the key terms are also part of the AMS Family Faith Assessment, as we will see in a, in a moment. Now, the third column here has a number one at the top, and it's empty. This is left empty so that as you're looking for um, information in the textbook, in the student or uh, the catechist textbook, um, you can write the name of the book and the page numbering where you're finding additional information to teach this particular indicator. You also have three additional columns here. Title CCC, which stands for um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Catechism, uh, the Catholic uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church. And the uh, Compendium to the Catechism and the United States Catholic Catechism for Adults. Below here in the columns, underneath each of these um, uh, catechisms, you have the page number. So each indicator will lead to page numbers in the um, catechism where you can find uh, and learn more of, uh, about this specific topic. Now, up to this point, 
perhaps uh, it may be your experience uh, or it may not be, but um, in most uh, religious education programs, we have been telling parents for a long time that they are the primary educators uh, of the teaching of the faith of the children, but not doing a good job um, equipping or um, providing resources for the parents to do uh, what they are called to do, to be the primary educators in the faith of their children. In the National Directory for Catechesis, page 101 in Familiares Consorcio, number 38, we read, the parents are the primary educators in the faith of their children. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in number 2226, it states the parents teach their children to pray and discuss their vocation as children of God. The general director for catechesis takes it a little farther. It states that the family is the first place where faith is learned, lived, and interpreted. I can share with you that um, I was baptized at the age of two months. That's the that's what my parents and my godparents have shared with me. And I do remember uh, growing up in uh, in the heart of my, you know, in, in the heart of my family. And my father was the first one who introduced me to, to God as father when he taught me how to say the Our Father. My mother, on the other hand, taught me how to say the Hail Mary. And every night before uh, going to bed, she would hold me on her chest as she was laying in bed, and she would say to me, Marino, Marino is my middle name, and she would say, Marino, repeat after me. And she would start, Hail Mary, and I would repeat, Hail Mary. So it was my parents who first introduced me to God, to the church. Uh, who laid the first foundations uh, of my faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, later in my life, I began to attend religious education. In those days, uh, for me, it was called the doctrine. Uh, you perhaps grew up uh, knowing uh, faith formation as CCD. Mm -hmm. And um, it's because at baptism, the Christian community promises to assist parents in transmitting the faith to their children. But whose primary responsibility is it? It is the parents. If you, if you and I think about it, how many hours do we actually spend with the children teaching the faith in the classroom? You might say one hour or an hour and a half. And if you're lucky, perhaps two hours. And that's two hours each Sunday for, I don't know, 30 Sunday? Well, who spends most of the time with the children? 24-7, 365 days a year. And throughout the whole entire life of uh, the, the person. It is the parents. I can tell you, I am pretty old now, or pretty mature, I would say, uh, in my 40s, and I'm still my parent's child in the faith and also um, as a human person. So what we are dealing with now is how could we build a partnership, a collaborative partnership between the family and the religious education program at the Catholic uh, faith community in the chapel. We must begin thinking about how to involve uh, better the family in this enterprise of evangelizing and catechizing the next generation. So the church is calling us to rethink how we are doing catechesis, that it is not 
it is not the primary task of the catechist to teach the faith to these children. The primary task is to facilitate that communication, to equip the family, to provide tools for the parents. Um, and of course, the time that we have with the children to use it well to transmit the faith. But it is in the heart of the family that children first learn their faith, learn their prayers, and it is there in the family that faith is interpreted, where um, children learn how to pray, how to open the scriptures. Now, Thinking about the AMS Family Faith Assessment, we knew that we needed to have a tool to, um, to help us better plan, better set uh, goals and strategies for strengthening the teaching of the faith. So when we were discerning what this assessment would look like, what its purpose was going to be, we began thinking about the role of the family in catechesis. And we realized that it is, it is a prime moment to begin supporting the family um, online, at home, uh, through some um, tool, some process that would be year round. The AMS Family Faith Assessment is for grades two to eight. The second grade families will be engaging in this tool as a practicum. Third through eighth graders will actually be playing uh, and accessing all the uh, variety of tools that um, the AMS Family Faith Assessment provides. This tool, the AMS Family Faith Assessment, is family-centered. It is designed for active duty families who are attending religious education at the chapel. Of course, you will say, well, we have retired families here too. Of course, you know, they can also take advantage of this uh, uh, wonderful tool that we have uh, to the best of their possibilities as well. But it is primarily designed for active duty families. Um, it is also designed for three other categories that we have been able to identify. Um, the first category is those families uh, who are federal employees working outside the borders of the United States. So those families can also take advantage of this tool and use it uh, as they are uh, deployed outside the borders of the United States. Those families who are homeschooling in the faith, um, they can also uh, use this tool to enrich their understanding, their knowledge, and um, so that they can live out their faith. And those who are active duty families attending faith formation at civilian parishes outside the walls of the installations. So these are the four categories um, for whom the AMS Family Faith Assessment is intended. The, the AMS Family Faith Assessment is a year-round process. You and I grew up in school taking finals, taking midterms, to see whether or not we passed or fell to the next level. That's not the purpose of the AMS Family Faith Assessment. The Family Faith Assessment is a process to support the family so that they can better know, understand, and do the faith year-round. So how does the process work? In the beginning of the year, between the months of September and October, depending on when your religious education program begins, the family, meaning parents and children, will take what we call the family assessment together. This will give the catechetical leadership, the catechist, and the family uh, an initial understanding of where we are in terms of knowing the faith so that we can better plan, so that we can better set goals to strengthen the teaching of the faith in our individual religious education program. 
So the family will take the family assessment in the beginning of the year. Once they take the family assessment, they will continue throughout the rest of the year in what we call phase learning. The family will continue to engage learning the faith through questions and answers that are multiple choice or true or false or fill in the blank, which will also lead them to further in, um, uh, learn the faith by, con by connecting them or linking them to uh, an online version of the catechism or an online version of the uh, Bible and other resources that are available online. And as, as you can see, the family has been journeying together. Uh, parents and children have been playing all along throughout the year, leading up to a student-only assessment between the months of April and May. Because the family has been working together, the family has been journeying together, we would expect that the students, when they take the student-only assessment, they have grown in knowing the faith and hopefully in understanding the faith and relating it to, the, to their um, uh, life in school, at home, or whatever they happen to be. And hopefully what we are doing is forming disciples for the new evangelization so that as they encounter other people along their journey, whatever they happen to be, they can give an answer for what they believe, what their faith is. In other words, that these families become disciples and evangelists. Families that are learning the faith, engaging in uh, comprehending the faith so that they can actually go out and share the faith with other, uh, other people that they encounter in, in their day-to-day -day life, whether they do it by word or by lived example, as St. Francis would say, right? Right. The AMS Family Faith Assessment is um, aligned to the AMS Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization key elements, aligned to the standards and to the indicators. So each of the questions that are found in the AMS Family Faith Assessment are aligned to the indicators. They're, the questions are drawn from the indicators themselves. So what does this mean in terms of what we're doing in the classroom at the chapel? It means that we're all working together collaboratively, the family supporting the teaching of the faith at home, at the heart of the family, while the catechists and the catechetical leaders are teaching the faith at the chapel. And because it is a year-round process, we're all benefiting from this wonderful tool. As a matter of fact, the catechists could use this tool to play games with their class in, um, at the chapel. The priest chaplain could also um, have a gathering with the families and play games, uh, engage the families, um, you know, in a in a family gathering. Families actually can also play together uh, against one another, or imagine for us for a moment the mom who is deployed and dad who has stayed at uh, home with the children. They could also play whenever uh, mom has access to the internet. They could set a time where they can be face-to-face, -face, online, and uh, have some quality time talking about God, praying, and learning the faith in a dynamic manner. This tool, um, the AMS uh, Family Faith Assessment, comes with what we are calling the AMS Family Faith Passport. We know that the family's PCS, they move around, uh, you know, throughout the uh, military and throughout the archdiocese, from country to country, from state to state. 
from installation to installation, from continent to continent. So they're constantly moving around. So because now we have a tool that we're calling the AMS Family Faith Passport, um, families will be able to take their scores or their, their records just by providing an email account to, um, to the new installation to plug in their tile to the grade appropriate level. So the AMS Family Faith Assessment is a reporting tool for the family. Do we now have to worry about printing reports or writing letters? Not really, because all the scores from the AMS Family Faith Assessment will be housed in this AMS Family Faith Passport tool. This tool is designed for grades three to eight because second graders are uh, engaging in this tool, but as a practicum. In other words, getting ready for the actual experience in uh, starting in third grade. What is the registration process? What kind of information do we need to register the catechist or to begin registering actually the account for the installation followed by the catechist um, registration and then the student, the family. All we need is, or you need, is the name of the catechist and a non-government permanent email. For the family, all you need is the name of the student and a non-government permanent email of the family. That's all we need. We don't need any other information except those two pieces, a name and a non-government permanent email. So how do we go about opening the installation account? The priest, the AMS priest, is the administrator for the installation's account. The priest could also um, delegate these privileges to the Catholic um, religious education coordinator um, if he so desires. But he will be the, the one who will initiate opening the account. So once he opens the account, he will receive an email um, inviting him to register the catechist to the grade appropriate level. Once he uh, inputs the name and the email of each catechist and presses submit, the catechist will receive an instant email inviting them to now uh, input the name of each of their students into their grade appropriate level. Let's say that Ms. Smith has grades three, four, and five in one classroom. Ms. Smith can um, plug in each of the students to the grade appropriate level because she will have the option of selecting the grade appropriate level, which I will show you in a minute what it looks like. So once she has um, input all the names of the students and presses submit at the end of that form, each of the families will receive an instant uh, email welcoming them to the AMS Family Face Assessment and uh, encouraging them to begin engaging and playing uh, games online using the form in this, um, using the AMS Family Face Assessment tool. So let's um, continue here. Each installation will have a URL account or a URL uh, address which you can also post on the um, Catholic Faith Community website. Anyone can play the family play. Any adult can engage. However, they will need um, a password and a username in order to log in. But uh, in this case, only the families that are registered in the religious education program will have access to all the other tools. But anybody can play the games and uh, learn more about the faith. Um, again, second graders will have access only the, uh, to the family play as a practicum, getting ready for uh, uh, third grade. 
grades three to eight, we'd have access to the family assessment, the student assessment, the family play, and the AMS family faith passport, which stores all the scores of uh, the family progress in learning the faith. Now, you may be wondering, well, Jose, what are, what are we going to do with the lower grades and the upper grades, uh, high school age uh, grades? Well, we're beginning to think about expanding this tool to the lower and to the higher grade level. Why? Because it is about supporting the family so that they can learn, understand, and live out their faith more fully and more actively so that they can participate more actively in, uh, in mass and uh, attend more often, perhaps, uh, mass. So it's not about passing or failing as much as it is to support the family at home, online, anywhere they happen to be uh, around the world, as long as they have internet access. How else can you promote uh, this tool in your community? Through the community Facebook page, through bulletin, to, through newsletters, emails that you can send out to the families. Um, I would highly encourage that you gather the families uh, on a specific Sunday for a, an orientation to the AMS Family Faith Assessment. As a matter of fact, you can use the, uh, the slides that I have uh, provided here so that you can uh, uh, provide your own orientation to the families or have the families watch this uh, recording online on our uh, AMS website. So we hope that by implementing this tool, families will begin to uh, spend more quality time together. The idea behind uh, the implementation of forming disciples for the new organization, the Assets and Religion Curriculum Guide, and the AMS Family Faith Assessment is to provide a cohesive and intentional collaboration between the Catholic faith community religious education program, and the families. So now we can begin thinking about families and religious education uh, programs working, planning, and envisioning together so that we can provide a better and uh, quality faith formation for adults, youth, and children at each of our installation chapels. At this moment, I would like to take you to um, the AMS website to show you where you can find, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, uh, where you can find information about the AMS Family Faith Assessment on our website. So when you are on the AMS website, www.billarch.org, uh, you put your cursor uh, over offices, the offices tab, you will get a drop down list. Scroll down to evangelization and catechesis, you will get another drop down list to the right and move uh, your cursor over to faith formation slash assessment and click. You will land on this page which houses uh, the resources and the uh, curriculum guide uh, of forming disciples for the new evangelization. You also have here the third link um, is a link to the AMS Family Faith Assessment page on the website, which has information or instructions for the administrator, the catechist, and the parents. Also, how to get started with the AMS Family Faith Assessment. Uh, the, the process is laid out here. Some models of participation that families can consider and that you can promote. I'm sure that as we begin utilizing this tool, we will identify uh, other um, models of uh, playing and engaging with uh, AMS Family Faith Assessment. Also, you have some uh, expected outcomes here. Uh, for example, an increased attendance in mass. As a matter of fact, I can share with you that 
I was talking to um, a, another installation last week, and they they could not have a, a children's religious education uh, program uh, this year, but they didn't give up. Uh, what they did was that they flipped the coin, if you will, and they began uh, providing adult faith formation. What they saw happening as they began implementing adult faith formation is that families began to attend mass more often. Uh, families began to get more involved in the faith formation of their children. And you can imagine the rest of the story. So that's just to give you an example of what others are doing uh, by uh, becoming more creative. Now, the instructions for opening the account for the AMS priests are located in the clergy section here on the website. This uh, section, the clergy section, is password protected. Um, not even I have access to it. So um, it is uh, where the priest will find the instructions for opening the AMS Family Face account uh, for the individual installation. Now, um, let me now take you to the actual AMS Family Face Assessment website. And um, I will first show you what the tool looks like uh, from the administrator's perspective. So that you uh, have a feel for what the administrator, the priest, will be uh, seeing as he goes into register um, catechist to their respective grade levels. So let me log in here, and hopefully technology will work with us today. Okay, there we are. So um, this is what the um, what the administrator will see when uh, when he logs in to the website to the uh, um, installation account. the The priest will be able to see, or the uh, uh, catechetical leader, the lay catechetical leader, will be able to see this icon. Uh, which is uh, about the family assessment. That's the first step that the family uh, engages in. Once the family takes the family assessment and um, uh, click a submit, they will get the instant results for um, the family assessment. And this button will also uh, turn off. They will not be able to see it again because uh, this is just giving us a, um, a status of where the family is in terms of the knowledge of the faith. Once they take the, uh, the family assessment, they will, uh, they will move on to play the family uh, games here, the different categories in the family play, leading up to the student assessment at the end of the year. Um, now, the families, can continue playing this game throughout the whole year. They don't have to stop during the summer, but we're just um, you know, timing the family assessment and the student assessment so that we can have uh, some idea of how well we have done throughout the year. The administrator will have access to the, to the overall um, religious education program uh, scores, to the scorekeeper. So you can see here that the questions um, and the percentages are aligned to the key elements of forming disciples for the new evangelization curriculum guide. The family also has three additional bonuses, one on the Old Testament, another on the New Testament, and a third one uh, on the saints. The families uh, will be playing different uh, levels of intensity, so the administrator will be able to see how all the families as a whole are doing in terms of playing different levels of intensity uh, of the games. Let's go back to the, uh, to the main page here. Both families, catechists, and the administrator has access to the privacy policy, which basically states that 
no third parties will be um, will will have access or be sold to uh, the um, the data that is collected here, the names and the emails of each individual participant. So um, none of this information will be sold or shared with uh, third parties. If the family or the catechist or the catechetical leader has questions about the content of the AMS family face assessment, they can contact me by uh, me by phone or by sending me an email, and I will take care of the uh, content-related questions. If the family has questions about technology, this uh, icon here will generate an email uh, that they can send to the technology people of the uh, um, AMS Family Faith Assessment. Let me log out of here. Okay, and let me go back to show you other um, tools that the administrator has access to. The Excel reports. The Excel reports are much more in detail, and uh, it provides details, uh, information about the uh, overall uh, chapel by key elements and also by each of the standards, as you can see here. So as catechists, as catechetical leaders, as families, we can better um, plan and, and see which areas need to be strengthened uh, so that we can target the appropriate uh, area. And you can see here the, uh, the results or the scores by grade levels. The administrator has also access to this icon here, which is the register catechist. And this is where the um, uh, catechetical leader um, inputs the name of the catechist, the non-government permanent email of each catechist, and the grades that uh, this catechist is teaching. So remember it, Miss Smith has grades three, four, and five in one classroom. The administrator can check off these different grades, letting uh, her know that she has access or that she has um, children in these grade levels. So at the end, the administrator presses submit, and the catechist will receive an instant email um, welcoming them to now input the names of the students. All right, let me get out of here and show you what it looks like from the uh, perspective of the catechist. Let me log in as a catechist uh, to show you what this tool looks like for the catechist and what the catechist has access to um, uh, for her class. There we are. The catechist has access to uh, the, uh, the icons here for the family assessment, the student assessment, the family play, the scorekeeper by, install, uh, by grade level, I mean. So this is by grade level. The administrator and the catechetical year has access to uh, the, the scorekeeper by installation. The catechist has access by her uh, classroom, by his or her class. So it's exactly the same way uh, that um, the administrator scorekeeper looks like. The catechist also has access to this icon here to register um, students. She can add or subtract any students as students CCS or as um, students come uh, from other installations to your installation. So. Just the name of the student, the non-government permanent email of the family, and here you can see, by clicking there, the catechist can select the grade appropriate level for this particular student. Once he or she has um, input all the names and emails of each student, press it, she, she or he presses submit, and the family gets an instant email welcoming them to the AMS Family Faith Assessment. Let's get out of here. Um, and now, now let me um, 
show you what the family uh, site looks like. Let me log in as a student. So um, this is uh, one of the students. Actually, let me use another one here. Just a second. Okay, let me log in. And now we are logged in as a student or as a family. Um, the, the student and the family will see this family assessment uh, icon least in the beginning of the year between the months of September and October. Once the family takes the uh, family assessment together, they will continue to the family play. And they will play as many games as they want in the different categories or levels uh, of intensity. And then at the end uh, of the year, this other icon, the student uh, assessment, will uh, be lit and letting the family know that it is time for them to take the student assessment. And this is only for the student because um, throughout the year, the whole family has been playing together, getting their uh, student ready to take the student assessment. And hopefully, um, you and I will see a tremendous increase in knowledge of the faith by the student because the whole family has been working together supported by the Catholic Faith Community Religious Education Program. The family has access to the passport, as I was saying before, and the family will have all the scores recorded in the passport for each of their um, children. So as you can see here, this is my account, my family account. Uh, of course, this is a mock account. Uh, these are not my real children because I don't have any children. I uh, just case I've had that question asked, how many children do you have? And of course, I don't have that many. Uh, <laughs> so the family, uh, the family assessment scores will be here for each child. Uh, the student assessment at the end of the year, the scores will be housed here. Uh, the installation uh, scores um, for this particular family will be uh, recorded here, and you can see what grade they are um, they are in. The family can also see the scores um, by key elements and the scores by level of intensity that they are playing uh, the games. So all of this information is readily 24/7 every day of the year for the family. So um, they don't need to get a report from the installation because they can see it anytime. Um, and as a matter of fact, you will see in a minute how dynamic this tool is. So, Jose, I do have a question. Go for it. Uh, so when the parent or the family takes the family assessment, um, and they get a score for that, does that then dictate what level of intensity they will get for the family play, or can they select any level of intensity regardless of how well they've done on the family assessment? Excellent question. Anybody wants to respond to that? What do you think? Take a while, guess. Anybody? I think that they'll be able to pick whatever level that they want. Yes. They will be able to pick whatever okay. level they want in the family play because we're not looking at passing or failing, right? The purpose of this tool is to support the family so that they can teach the faith to their children. Um, so yes, they will be able to play whatever level of intensity they want to. They will be challenging one another. The children will challenge the parents to play level four to see how much you know mom and dad knows. And then the, the parents will also challenge the children to play another level just to see, you know, to engage. Uh, what I see as I'm uh, sharing this tool with, uh, with catechetical teams is that the catechists themselves get so wrapped up in the spirit of the assessment that I wish I had a, uh, a video camera, you know, turn on so that I can show it to them 
so that they, they can see how much joy they are expressing as they are engaging the tool. As a matter of fact, um, I would like to invite you to choose a category and we'll play a game to see, to show you um, what these games look like uh, and, and so that you have an appreciation for it. Anyone want to say what category um, you would like to play? Hmm. What about the math? Oh, good choice. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping we can get these answers right. We should be able to. <laughs> <laughs> be not so well, just blame it on pressure. <laughs> yeah. So the key element here is uh, uh, sacraments because uh, that's, uh, that's what the Mass is, right? It's the liturgy and the sacraments. And that would be, um, that would be, Pillar number two in the, uh, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, it would be element, uh, key element two, and standard number, uh, number three. As a matter of fact, I believe. I hope I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, we're going to play all levels here. I can play as Casey, which is the name of the student, as a guest. So Casey can play with, uh, you know, a friend, or Casey's family can play with... Uh, another family, or they can play as multiplayer. Which option, or which, um, yeah, which uh, option of player would you like to, to do? How about multi multiplayer? Multiplayer? We're all here. With multiplayer, yeah. would you prefer to play in English or in Spanish? <laughs> Probably English. What do you think, Donna? English. I could try English. Spanish, but that would actually... I can guarantee you I want the yeah. Spanish version. <laughs> Um, a little difficult. The games are in Spanish yet. Uh, as you can see, we have such a tremendous opportunity to grow this tool. And so some of the games are in Spanish in some categories, but not all of them are in, uh, available in Spanish yet. Um, but eventually, hopefully, this, ca uh, this tool will also be available in Spanish and extended to the upper grades and to the lower grades. So let's go in. Uh, into this game. Um, so who wants to play Casey? I'll be Casey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, is that Donna? Or yeah, that's Brenda. Donna. I'm sorry, Brenda. Brenda. Donna, would you like to play a uh, guest then? I'll play guest. Okay. So Casey. Children should yes. receive First Communion before they go to First Confession. True or false? I'm going to say false. And you're right. It's, yeah, woohoo! Look at this. You already got the answer. Mm -hmm. okay? But the tool is now um, encouraging you to go to the Catechism in number 1457. And by clicking that icon, it takes you to the Vatican website. Uh, for the catechism so that you can learn more, read more, and engage, you know, in this conversation a little deeper. Does it matter that, um, that uh, excuse me, let me close this here. Does it matter how much time I take in a particular uh, question? What do you think? I, I think, does it depend on the game? It will Aren't some of them timed, but otherwise, no? The questions are actually timed, but you can spend as much time as you want. As a matter of fact, the longer the family takes to play the games, that would mean that they are engaging more, I would say. Because okay, so they could click on the catechism before they answer if they want to look that up, or does that only appear? I don't remember. Did that only appear after you answered? Let's find out. Let's find oh, okay. out into the next question. What do you see on the screen? Do you see a link? No, not yet. Oh, no, okay. They will get the link as soon as they uh, choose the, the best answer that they think it is. So, okay. uh, Donna, what does God give us in every sacrament? A, music? Um, Just choose. I was going to say B, grace. Go, Donna. Go, Donna. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Again, to the catechism number 1127 online. So I'm just going to continue um, so that I don't, you know, uh, just to move forward. Casey, 
only the ordained can serve as electors and acolytes. True or false? I'm going to say false. Okay. You're right. Again, mm -hmm. it takes you to the catechism so you can learn about lectures and acolytes. Okay? okay. Um, next question. What is said or sung before or after a song? Oh, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, hey, I do it every day. <laughs> well, we do want to know what happens if you get it wrong, so I'm kind of hoping you get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, after a song, it's the... I'm going to say A, acclamation. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. that's a an Yeah, and I was tossed between that and the <laughs> anthem. <laughs> All right. But does it matter that you got that it wrong? That was a tough one. Yeah. Does it matter that you got it wrong? No. Not really. Because the point here is to learn. So now we know that what is said or sung before or after a song is the antiphon, okay? And antiphon is actually a key term that is highlighted, underlined in the um, curriculum guide. Therefore, the key terms that are defined in Appendix 3, the alphabetical glossary or the catechetical glossary, are actually incorporated into the tool. And by clicking the OW icon here, you will get the definition of this term. Isn't this cool? This is yeah. very cool. Yeah. So let's move forward to the next question, and uh, that would be Casey. Which part of the Mass explains the Gospel in terms of living in today's world? The um, homily. Okay. You're right. Let's move mm -hmm. forward. And you can see it takes you to the Catechism, right? Next question. How do Catholics generally show reverence for the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament? Um, B, by genuflecting. You're right. And it takes you to learn more. Now, do you see here on the left-hand side of your screen? There is a scoreboard. Yes. What do you see there? It gives us the score, the time so far, yeah, and then how many questions there are and how many were answered. Yes, for Casey and for guests, you can see what uh, key elements you're playing the level of intensity you're playing, and so forth. So the family can see the scores as they are, you know, engaging in the tool. Um, so that, that, that I, I find that to be also a great, uh, a great tool as well. So moving forward, Casey, um, on what day of the week did the disciples meet to break bread together? The... Sabbath. All right. Um, are you sure? Um, I don't know. That's a... Seems like... <laughs> no, I'm not sure. It seems like a... I don't know. The, I guess the... Um, I thought they meant more than one day a week. I thought they were always together. So <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm going to say the Sabbath. Okay. What do you think, Donna? I was thinking that, too, but thinking the Sabbath. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure either. Huh. What could it be? You know I'm playing a trick here, right? I hope you, you got it. I'm just giving it time so that um, the system... Oh, to time out. Me out. There you, yeah. There you are. Oh. It gives you... Oh, it's Sunday, the first day of the week. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, my, Sunday is my Sabbath, so technically I think I should get that right. Right. So <laughs> did we learn something? Yes, but oh. you can't take too long or it gives you the answer. And it gives you the answer, right? And it takes you, again, to right. the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Let me just click on this randomly um, so, so that you can see what the family uh, gets at the end of this game uh, to show you some neat tools uh, that you can, uh, the, the family can use. Okay. Okay. Got, I'm getting everything wrong here, but that's okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you're messing with my average here. Uh, <laughs> so you see here, this Your is... Your average is better than mine at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, fill-in-the-blank question. So uh, you get... 
this kind of questions too. Okay. Yeah, I'm messing with. No, C. Go with C. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> You see the family having some fun, learning the faith. Yes, yes, yes. But you know what? Honestly, some of these questions, I mean, when I'm looking at some of the levels, those level four questions are going to be really difficult. So I'm sitting there looking, I'm going, uh, I know I should know this, and I'm actually second-guessing myself on some of them. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's one of those, you know, go with your first instinct. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, at the end, when, when the family finishes playing this game, they will get, um, of course, they will be con congratulated, and they will get uh, these icons here. The family mm -hmm. will print out the results. They can email the results. So let's say that um, Ms. Jones is deployed and Mr. Jones is uh, home with the children. But um, uh, so Mr. John and, 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 and the child wants to email the results to mom who is deployed so that when mom gets a chance to get online, she can uh, read how much, you know, they have, uh, they have played in, 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 in the MS Family Faith Assessment. So they can email the results. They can review all the questions again. They can see what questions they missed. They can play the game over and over and over and over until they get so tired and go to bed. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and they can also pick new games from here. So they can do whatever they want with this tool, and they get the scores here. What do you think? Yeah, that was fun. It is fun, I hope. It is fun. Now, Jose, on this, as catechist, uh, if we sign in, like I said, if we wanted to play a game in, in the classroom, we, could we sign in where we, like, where we registered the students and sign in, but then click on one of the family play games? Um, the catechist will have an account, so um, the, the catechist can play from the family play, okay? Okay. And the scores will be kept in the um, in the catechist account. So um, uh, each individual family will have their own account, and each individual will have their own account too. But the catechist okay. can use this tool in the classroom as well. Could okay. father so, use this so the when, when, with the families? Mm -hmm. So as a catechist, will I have two accounts, like a catechist account and then a family account? No. You will have okay. a catechist account, and each of the uh, uh, students will show up in your account. Okay. Right, but she also has children in our faith formation program. Oh. Yes. So that is absolutely right. That's a good question. Yes, if you are a parent and you are a catechist, as a, as a, as a catechist, you will have your classroom account, mm -hmm. have your student, um, you know, all the scores of your student, but also you will have an account for your own family because okay. you have children also in the program. Right, okay. That's a good question. I hadn't had that question before. All right. Any that makes up for me not knowing about the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I, I answered wrong. I answered acclamation <laughs> instead of am from. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's, I have to play this. That is exactly the point that, uh, that we as catechists uh, have to also engage in learning the faith. And as a matter of fact, as we are teaching the faith, we are the ones who are actually getting more out of the, uh, of the process. Because as we're teaching and as we're actually uh, preparing the lesson plan, we have to study, we have to research, and by doing that, we're going deeper and deeper in understanding and knowing our faith. So mm -hmm. this is good for adults, youth, and children, whether they are, you know, catechists or catechetical leaders or parents. Um, how about in, in, youth, in youth ministry? We could use this tool as well for youth ministry and have some fun with the kids. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Of course. So that's the idea, to expand it. Any other questions that you may have? Um, I do have a question, Jose. Now, um, okay, so say right now I'm at a military installation with my family. We use the chapel on base. Now, I, I PCS and I go, for whatever reason, out to a civilian church. Um, I know I still have access to this. I can play the game and everything, but is it my responsibility as well then to make sure my family and then my children at the end of the year are taking 
the assessment to stay in this program, even though we're not actually at a, you know, attending church at a military installation, but rather doing it at a, in the civilian church. Okay. Um, the question is, the question is about the civilian. I mean, uh, the uh, the the active duty family. Uh, right. At religious vacation of, um, you know, in a civilian parish. That's the question, right? Yes. Yeah. Do I do I have to stay? Do I have to take the make sure that I'm taking the my children are still taking their assessments to stay active in this, or that they so they don't fall behind in this, even though they're being assessed, you know, separately or receiving sacraments at a civilian installation, a civilian right. church. In a civilian yeah. church. Um, the family will use it to to the best of you know to to gain the most out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, those those uh, last three categories, um, the federal employees, the uh, homeschooling, and the uh, civilian parish uh, family, they will. We have designed a specific account for them. So when you get those families uh, asking to enroll in the AMS Family Faith Assessment, I would encourage you to send them my way to send me an email and I will plug them in in their uh, grade appropriate level. Um, the idea is to support those families as well the best we can. The only families that you as a catechist will be responsible for, you know, continuously encouraging and uh, promoting the tool with would be the families that are involved in the religious education program uh, at the chapel. So. So the whole year, I would encourage you to have announcements that Father, you know, includes something, you know, somewhere in Mass to say, let's keep playing, let's keep having fun, or ask the families. I mean, he could very well ask the families, what games have you played this, this week? And, and engage the families, you know, to inspire other families who may not want to also participate at this moment, because there will be some family who will say, you know, Donna, I, I, I will not um, enroll. I don't want to enroll because I don't understand this tool. That is fine. Um, we're not forcing anybody to, you know, to come on board. It's through persuasion. Uh, we invite people. We'll invite families to engage. And most likely, I would say the 99% of the families will want to participate because it is a tool to support them, no matter where they happen to be to grow in the faith of a family. Okay, so so if a student or a family does not participate, they can still they're still they can still be part of the faith formation classes, they can they can still progress to the next grade level even if the family chooses not yeah. to participate. Okay, okay. And and you would you would have to find other means of um, you know, of making sure that they are learning the faith. But most but most right, it would be like our, our assessments in class, like I do in yeah. our tests in class. Exactly. And just okay. for the sake of it, I think, just for, you know, to, to see how well the students are, you might want to, I don't know, do an, um, you know, an in-class five-question assessment just to see how well they are engaging in learning the faith. And most okay. likely, I would say that, the, that these kids will, will, will prove to know the faith um, more than than you expected because they're engaging in, in learning the faith uh, through this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have any other questions, yeah, I, comments? What, yeah, actually, um, uh, this is Donna. Um, on that, um, if we as a family is that either don't have internet access or I actually had one parent tell me that sometime they don't check their emails all that often so the links and, and whatnot could be you know an issue of getting the link and knowing that it's there so if they don't have internet access um, really there's no other way for us to be able to give them the family assessment or the student assessment is that correct um, how about do they do you think that they would have a smart cell phone some of them may probably do, so they could do it on the smart cell phone. They could do it on their iPad, cell phone, as long as they have internet access. Um, another idea would be to use the uh, to go to the uh, nearest library and um, access through a public library computer. I would. Okay. Um, 
I think that our goal would be to encourage families to participate and to engage using the digital devices that they have. So I could access, um, I can actually access the AMS Family Faith Assessment through my smart cell phone or my iPad okay. uh, and play from there. They don't necessarily have to have a laptop or a computer as long as they have internet access. They can um, play and participate. Okay. All right, and then um, a couple of things is I do, I was already planning, I think you, you and I, Jose, I talked about this on uh, when I was communicating by email. I do want to have an orientation with my parents to lay this all out. You said that the um, PowerPoint presentation would be available, that I could pull some of those slides and combine it with mine. Is that correct? Yes, yes, I can make those available to you because the point is yeah. to share the good news with everybody, okay, um, mm -hmm. to, to support the families with all the tools that we have. And as, as you know, uh, you have been to the, to the AMS website. Mm -hmm. Catechists have the catechist segments on the AMS um, uh, Faith Formation page on the website. And just below the catechist segments, the, the parents have what we call the um, parent segments of the Forming Disciples for the New Evangelization Curriculum Guide. So that's you know, that's another tool that they have at the fingertip, um, you know. So it, it's easy to get to. They have access to the prayers. They have access to sample lesson plans, um, other resources. As a matter of fact, have you considered using the Digital Media Center uh, of the AMS to um, watch videos or to download prayers? Um, and we also have what we call the AMS USA app. Uh, on your smart, smart cell phone, type USA, um, AMS USA app, AMS USA app, and uh, you can download the AMS app where you will find prayers, you will find meditations, um, uh, faith formation, uh, uh, liturgy, I mean, uh, literature, I mean. Um, there is, there is so much that we have available to support families and, and catechists um, in our religious education program. So take advantage of all the tools that we have. Use them as much as you can. No, oh, I do. I, I do. I try to pull off a lot of different things. And part of it too, what I do is like the bulletin boards in our classroom area in our fellowship hall. Mm -hmm. I use that a lot too to catechize even the adults. You know, when they're standing outside the classroom to be able to, you know, waiting on the you know the class to be done. They have got bulletin boards and stuff like that that they can, you know, read. And I do different types of themes and stuff like that. But I do have a very large board that is dedicated to nothing but AMS. Right. So there's all different things up in fact I just you know re, um, this past week and updated it to put the cause you know put the uh, information on there for the cause for um, for the Capadano. Oh good. Um, yes. and, and whatnot. So I do different things and especially over in Fellowship Hall when you know even though there's adults that don't have children over in the program over in our program I try to pick different themes and put them up on the bulletin board because I know as the coordinator of religious education it's my job to ensure that I catechize everybody not yes. just much not just our youth and our in our there. So I try to do it any way that I can. Some people are just not comfortable with coming to a class, um, but they'll stop and read something on the bulletin board that might catch their eye. Yeah, that's so, cool. And uh, that's, yeah, go ahead, Donna. Well, that's what I said. So that's kind of what I do, but I do, I pull from AMS. I kind of look and see what any news, you know, things have come out of different information. I've clicked on the resources, and I go like to the, um, you know, the uh, the United States Catholic um, Bishops, uh, Council of Bishops, you know, that site. I pull information from there. Um, and I, so I just try to, you know, kind of pass it around. And I also look for things that I can also give to my catechists because, you know, I know that I'm responsible to also you know, make sure that they're nourished in their faith and, and given other tools for themselves to, to help take care of them and their faith journeys. So I, I try to go to all these different sites and, and pull from there. Wonderful. And also uh, the publishers, uh, depending on who you're using for um, your textbooks, the publishers also have um, resources for the families online. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, th there is so much that we have available to us uh, to learn more uh, our faith, uh, to understand better our faith. I mean, there is so much. So 
I'm glad that we're you know we're doing the work that we're doing, and that we're collaborating um, uh, with the family in these ways. So, yeah. Any other? My other question. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say my other question is because we did we have we didn't have access to the family assessment at that time. So at this time for our installation, or basically for everybody. Do they automatically go in for this session for April and May and go in and do the student assessment at this time? Yes. Um, you can go ahead and uh, open the account, have father open the account. Okay. Uh, and continue the process of, you know, inviting the catechist and then the catechist inviting the families. All you need is basically, remember, the name of the student and a non-government permanent email of the family. That's it. Um, so when the family gets the invitation, they will have this family assessment icon here will be lit and they can take the family assessment and continue with the family play. This, uh, uh, the student assessment will not be available this year um, because of the timing. You know, it, it, we just came out with this. But next year, come uh, next year, starting September, this uh, uh, family assessment uh, 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 tool here, right here, this will be a new, a new set of questions. Um, and then at the end of next year, next categorical year, the student will be able to take the student-only assessment at the end of the year. Okay. And so this year it will be just a family assessment and the family play, uh, which, you know, it's more than perhaps they can buy. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Now yeah, that'll help too. And because I, I know I got some parents, you know, stressing out, and you know, it's just like, okay, just let it. And I was like, and I had a, like one particular family just kind of really um, stressed out, and they, um, I just said, we're being trained on this on Wednesday. Give me the time to get the information, find out what's going on. And I said, I'm planning on meeting, having meetings for the parents, so I can just put this out once and stop the rumors that are going on, and just. Let us get the information, and we will tell you what needs to be done. So it actually helps that you know we can let them know, hey, the family assessment's up. You need to go ahead and do that. You know, preferably before or the end of the school year. Definitely by June if you know you got a lot of stuff going on. Because I I know for us we're going to want to see that everyone's done the family assessment, and they basically have all summer to do family play to get themselves ready for the new catechetical year yep. and take the family assessment again. Yeah. And when you when you give the orientation, uh, help them understand that this is this is a tool to support them. Uh, it's not to test them. It's it's just to support them in their vital role as a as the first catechist of their children. And also um, that it is not a difficult uh, tool. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. Once they begin engaging, it's going to be just fun. It's going to be fun. They're going to laugh. They're going to challenge one another. I can see parents and children jumping off their seats because they are getting the, uh, the, 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 the questions correct or because, you know, um, the, one of them is getting the questions wrong. And that's fine. It's just, you know, we're all learning to face together. And what better way than with the AMS Family Face Assessment. So, Support them, okay. encourage them, and be as positive as you can be. And and if they still have doubts, tell them, go online, try it, and if you don't like it, come back, and I'll give you the money back. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jose, is this the um, like this recording? Is it will it be available for where I can conduct another training session for the catechists that did not come tonight for them to or for them to be able to link themselves and and listen to it. Absolutely, yes. And, and by the way, All right, can you omit? Can you omit the section where we got our questions wrong? I'll, I'll get a scissor and start cutting. You know, <laughs> <laughs> everybody's going to laugh about us because I, I, at one of them, I also said, "I'm not sure about this." Of course, I wasn't yeah. about the the answer or the question. I was just, you know, letting the the clock uh, time out. Um, but I also wanted to add that. This is a, this is a complementary tool. Um, there is no fee attached to it. It's uh, it's to support the family and Archbishop Broglio. Um, you know.
faith formation is one of his top priorities, uh, that the family is learning the faith, not only learning the, the, the faith, but also understanding and falling in love with the person of Jesus Christ and his message, and living out uh, the faith in the heart of the family, at work or in the school, wherever we happen to be. So um, I, I'm very grateful for for um, the support that, you know, that uh, Archbishop Broglio is giving to this school. This is his school, and this is, you know, this is what Archbishop Broglio wants to share with the families to support them at home, online, all throughout this uh, global archdiocese. So, Yusuf. Um, so uh, when, because uh, I know it takes time to get everything downloaded to the site, when do you anticipate like the your PowerPoint presentation and this recording being available? The PowerPoint, I can email it to you immediately after okay. our gathering here. Uh, okay. The recording, I will uh, make it available um, next week. Of course, when, when you're recording, you're dating this, uh, this tool, right? But uh, yes, as soon as I as I go, uh, get back to to the office, I will make this tool available because it's it's very it's a very large document to email. Um, mm -hmm. Oh no, I understand. No, I understand. So yes, it will be available, let's say in about a week. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. nope, not a problem. Like I said, I know you're on travel and whatnot, so um, no, I just that way I have an idea of when to go looking for it. Okay. Yes, keep uh, keep this. Uh, this training's in your prayers because uh, we're just sharing the word with with all the catechists and catechetical leaders and uh, and also with the family. So that this tool may be a blessing, uh, just as the, uh, the the curriculum guide is a blessing. That the AMS Family Faith Assessment may also be a blessing for the families and for the for the catechists and all the adults involved in faith formation. Most definitely. Yeah. Yes. Any other uh, final comments or questions uh, before we uh, we depart? Uh, no, thank you. This was very helpful. No, Jose, thank you. Yeah, like I said, it is very helpful, and I have a better idea, and I know how to help answer you know, like my catechist questions, and then of course you know the parents and stuff like that, and I can you know, get this move forward. So most definitely, no, nope. thank you very much, and thank you for you know, making arrangements for the special training for us because you know I know I work all day and, and stuff like that, and I can't uh, I usually attend anything that's in the afternoon, so I do appreciate this special training. Well, it's a pleasure to serve you, and I am available uh, to you uh, and to the catechists at any time. Um, you know, you are my top priority, and um, anyone else who would like to have a, a, um, a, an orientation, uh, a live orientation, I am available. Uh, all you have to do is email me, send me an email request that you would like to have an orientation at X day and time, and we'll go ahead and schedule it, because technology nowadays, guess what, connects us so easily. Um, you are on the East Coast, I'm on the West Coast right now, I might as well would be in Japan or in Germany, and still we're still connected, so this is a great gift and a great blessing. Um, so let us glorify our Father uh, for, you know, the gifts that we have, so let us conclude um, this time together with uh, with an Our Father. Would that be uh, uh, something that we can do? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father, our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done. Be done. On, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us give us this day, today our, our daily, daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those, those who trespass against, trespass against us. And, and lead us not in, into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from evil. From evil. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. And uh, let us continue to be in touch. Okay, Definitely. Thank, thank you, so you Jose. Take care. Take care. Take care. Have safe travels. God bless to you, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank bye, you. Donna. See you Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye, Brenda. Bye-bye. <laughs>